Okay, so this is Product Launch Workshop Session 2. Uh, this is the live workshop, and what we're going to talk about is uh, the same uh, kind of a continuation of what we talked about last week. Um, we're going to be working through the technical aspects of your product launch. And of course, we assume that you've already figured out what your product components are. So if you know you're going to be delivering a PDF or a series of PDFs or videos or a members area, we're going to assume that you already know that and that you were then ready to deliver that content. Right? <clears throat> okay. Um, so uh, number three, um, we're going to assume that you already know what you'll be writing as your copy. And uh, finally, um, we will set up your product launch upsells and email marketing in this series. So we're going to take all four sessions in order to do that. So let's talk about the product launch order of operations. Um, you want to first map out your marketing funnel even before you actually create the product because you, when you map out your marketing funnel, this will actually determine how you're going to create the product, right? And uh, and uh, it, um, the, the other thing is that um, uh, you will then want to outline your sales copy. This, again, will help you to determine what you put in your product. What you don't want to do is to create the entire product first, obviously, and then go to the marketplace with it. You want to go to the marketplace, determine what you know is going to sell, and then go and create your product. And once you've done that, you can then start the product creation process. Right, you can start. Uh, you can start putting your videos, your audios, your PDFs, anything else together. You should then start outsourcing or creating your graphics. This part will be easy for you if you have already outlined your sales copy. What happens to people often, and, and I've seen this, and this actually happened to me too, is you finish the entire product. You then have to start writing sales copy and outsourcing outsourcing graphics. And, um, and this is how many good ideas sit on the shelf. When uh, you, you want to do the counterintuitive thing, you want to map out your sales funnel first, you want to outline your sales copy, and then you start creating your product. And once you start creating your product, while the product is being created, again, this is important, while the product is being created, not after, start outsourcing your graphics. And if you've written your sales copy, that's going to be an easy thing to do. Then set up your sales page. Again, this is during the product creation process. Uh, so don't wait until you finish all your videos or all your PDFs. You should be doing these things simultaneously, side by side. You should be setting up your tracking. right? Because again, once you, once you finish the product, you should be just about ready to get ready for your launch. But you, but, but you have to sort of do this in, these, in this order. Otherwise, you will come to the end, and then you'll have a lot of things to do, which can be discouraging, and then it can keep you from actually finishing the product. Okay? Um, you should be testing your sales pages and order buttons. Right? You can actually do this without having completed the product. Um, again, this is something that if you leave till the end to do, you, I promise you, you will run out of time. Right, so don't do that. Start working on testing your sales pages and your order button while you're in the product creation process. You know, you, you're creating videos or you're typing and creating PDFs. You take a break and instead of going to uh, social media, um, go to your sales funnel and start testing out your sales pages. Go to your order button. Um, what this does is not only keeps you productive, but it will also shorten the amount of time it's going to take to create your product. Um, set up your product delivery. Now, obviously, you need to be finished with your product at that point, uh, but you should be uploading your, uh, your completed videos, you're uploading your completed PDFs, and you should be getting ready to start figuring out, well, how am I going to deliver this? Am I going to deliver this through a membership? Is it going to be a download page? Whatever it is, you just want to get it set up. And then after that, um, after you set up your, your delivery process, you should set up your post-launch email system and strategy. If you are doing this right, and again, nobody can do a product launch perfectly, but if you're doing this right, you should be finishing up your videos and all these other things about at the same time. Right? Does that make sense? Does everybody get that? Do you, does that make sense? Um, these, are, these are parallel processes. They are not at the end processes. So while you are creating your product, 
these are the things that you should be doing. And in fact, you are already have, and I think it's in this webinar, there's a checklist, right? You should be walking through that checklist as you create your videos, as you create your PDFs, as you create um, whatever it is you're going to be delivering, as you create your software, uh, okay? <clears throat> so um, let's see. What we're going to do is we're now going to go back to Warrior Plus. We're going to pick it up where we left off. And let's go back to Warrior Plus. And we're going to go inside of our product. And let's see, let's uh, find the product we are working on here. Okay, so we are now working through uh, this, uh, this product creation process. We've already talked about the product image and limiting sales. I've already talked about support and sort of what you want to do with that. Again, remember I recommended that you use something like Freshdesk or Zendesk. I think Zendesk is $10 a month for one user, $20 for two, um, and having a having a record of things really is going to be helpful. I'm going to try to show you this here. Um, so I need to try to show you this without revealing anyone's uh, 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 information here. Let's see if I can find a ticket. We're going to see if I can find a ticket that maybe I sent in. Okay, so here is Zendesk. <laughs> And when someone actually sends in a ticket, um, what you can do is you can have, uh, you have the ability then to answer that ticket or reopen it. Again, um, what this does is it helps you to keep a paper trail. It actually helps you to uh, keep track of things. And it will keep you from, um, during a launch especially, losing track of somebody's, um, you know, somebody's request. And it's really important during a launch that everything that happens, everything that somebody sends in to you, that you were able to keep track of. And you know, when, it, when, it's, when you're not launching a product, um, it's important to have uh, this kind of support. It's probably a little overkill. But when you have a launch, right, I promise you there will be something that will go sideways. And you want to be able to not only answer everyone, but you want to make sure that you're not missing anything. And if you have someone sending you emails that go to your email box, Sometimes, your e sometimes that email will go to spam. Sometimes you will send one back and it will go to spam. Sometimes you will not get the email until late because of uh, someone uh, running a crime job. There are all kinds of things that can get in your way of answering support during a launch. And so I would suggest that even if you only get it month to month, you want to have something reliable like Zendesk or Freshdesk where the emails are going to be sent and you can receive them and you can have a paper trail because, for example, if I wanted to go and search for this person, right, Thomas Duncan, I want to search for them by email. I can do that right here, right? In fact, here's the, here's the, uh, here's the one that I just submitted. Right, as Thomas Duncan. And so I can answer this now. If I wanted to assign this to Sydney, I could do it. So for example, I could take the ticket or I could assign it to Sydney. So if you're working with a team, you can actually assign that to a second person. Right? You can actually if you're working with someone else, let's say that you're outsourcing to someone, you can assign it to that person and you can say, um, make sure to uh, give them a, a, a free gift. Right? You can tell that to the person that you're outsourcing to with this internal note. Now again, uh, Zendesk isn't any better than any of the other uh, uh, help desks, but it is better than having your own on your server because of the email deliverability issue and the fact that this keeps a paper trail. Now there is also, uh, you can also get something like, um, I think it is called, uh, what's it called? It's OS Ticket is what it's called. The other old one is called OS Ticket. And OS Ticket does, is free. You can um, have it customized. But I think, again, Zendesk is, is $10 a month. It'll be money well spent 
if you were having a launch. Right, any questions about that? Any questions? Does everybody understand kind of what I was saying about that? Does that make sense? Okay, so let's move on to the next step. Okay, now pricing details. Um, on Warrior Plus, when you put in the regular price, this is what you want to put in as the value, right? So whatever the, the product is actually worth. And so if you've determined the product is actually worth or it's eventually going to sell for something, that's what you want to put here as the regular price. If the regular price after the launch is going to be $47, excuse me, you want to write that in. Because what's going to show on the, on the uh, sales button is that the regular price is going to be $47. So the customer, when they come there, they're going to know that, hey, th the price could actually go up to this or it's likely to go up to this. So you want to make sure that you put that regular price in this box. The sale price is your launch price, right? So whatever your launch price is going to be, that's what you should actually be placing here in this box. Now, let's say that, uh, does everybody understand the concept of a dime sale? Okay, uh, so, so if you understand the concept of a dime sale, please put the number one in the question box. If you don't, and you'd like for me to explain it, please put the number two in the question box. Okay, so most of you understand the concept of a dime sale. Basically, um, a dime sale is when you determine how much each sale is going to cause the price to rise by. So in other words, we can actually say that the regular price is going to be $47, the sale price is going to start at $17, and it's going to increase by, let's say, a penny, with every one sale, right? And we can say, well, we don't want it to go any higher than $17.95, right? So in other words, during the launch, we only want the price to go to $17.95, but we, 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 want to, um, we want to do something to encourage people um, in a way, uh, not, not in a scarcity way, but in a way that's in their best interest. So it's in your best interest if you don't want to uh, pay the rising price to get it now, right? So that's why you do a dime sale. All right, now the next thing you have here is your email integration. So what's going to happen is that when you set up an email integration, every time you get a buyer, that buyer is going to be added to a list, right? You can connect a number of autoresponders here. So for example, um, Let's say that I wanted to add in a Weber active campaign, constant contact, drip, get response, go to webinar, Infusionsoft, and any of these autoresponders. So I can add any of those. All right, so when I get to this point, I can say I've already set up my get response. And when I go to that menu, um, Warrior Plus will let me pick my list that I want to use. If I want to create a new list, I can create a new list, right, just for Warrior Plus, right? So I can cre create a list that is, I can say this list is um, new product list and save it. Okay, it takes a minute to save or so. Okay, it says please select a list. Well, we add the list, and then we select the list. Okay, then we click Save. And then um, everybody who actually buys the product is going to be added to our Get Response list. And that's probably going to be the most important thing that you're going to do in this process so that whenever you get buyers, even if you set up a free product, you want them added to a list that you can actually manage inside of your autoresponder. All right now, we're not going to do software integration or membership integration, but for example, these are all of the membership scripts that you can use that will integrate directly with Warrior Plus. So if you have a member, uh, Digital Access Pass, Infusionsoft, Kajabi, Nanocast, Optimized Member, S2 Member Pro, or Wishlist Member, all of those plugins or all of those 
membership systems will integrate with Warrior Plus. And what that means is that when, uh, let's say that you're selling a product on a monthly basis, is that when your buyer, uh, uh, maybe, they, maybe they, 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 uh, they miss their payment or maybe they decide they're not going to be in your membership anymore, what's going to happen is um, your pay, they're, they're, they will automatically be uh, removed from your membership because you integrated the purchase process here in Warrior Plus. Does that make sense? So if you get that, please put the number two in the question box. So if you get that part. Okay, so how many of you already have a membership script? Right, so if you have a membership script, please put the number three in the question box. So if you already have one. Right, so if you already have any one of these, you can actually use them. And there's actually here, one here that I don't see. I know that MemberSonic, um, uh, MemberSonic, is is also right. Member Sonic integrates uh, very well with Warrior Plus, right? I think it's considered a third-party uh, system, but um, it also integrates. Okay, so some of this um, you're going to get with a particular um, a system. So let's say that you decide you're going to use, um, let's say you're going to decide to use Optimize Member. Optimize Member will give you this information. Let's say you decide to use wishlist member. Wishlist member is going to give you this information. And in some cases, um, you're not going to have any membership integration, but the membership plugin that you use asks you and gives you this information, the notification URL and the key generation URL. Right? And each individual membership script will tell you whether or not you need to send the IPN or the delivery URL. Right? So again, Whichever membership script you use, it's going to give you this information. Now, you don't have to use this, right? You don't have to use any of this. You can just deliver people to a thank you page, right? And if, any, if, if you ever have a case where something goes sideways in your launch and people cannot get to your members area or people are not getting the, uh, the confirmation email, the easiest thing to do is to turn this off. Um, 99 out of 100 times, if you're going to have a problem, it's going to be here. And so you can solve that by putting in a delivery URL here. Right? Just deliver them to the thank you page where they can either set up their membership ID or they can get to their download page, one or the other. But what you want to do is you do want to test it. If you, again, you find out during your testing that you cannot get this to work. Um, you don't fret. What you do is you send people to a thank you page until you get it working. Right? So that makes sense. Is everybody with me? So if that makes sense to you, please put the number four in the question box. All right. Very good. Okay. So I've got a question about not to. Um, you're, you were asking about Insta Suite. I believe, I believe that Insta Builder integrates with Warrior Plus. I could be, I, 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 I do believe it does. So I think that everything inside the Insta Suite, Insta Builder Warrior Plus, I believe that it, it integrates. Okay, uh, okay, so you're, you're okay. your question is about, um, you don't think you'll ever do your first launch if it's not in your own system. Um, okay, so you're saying, that you uh, you you would rather uh, not use uh, a, an affiliate platform. Okay, so InstaSuite has its own affiliate program. Okay, so here, here's here's what I would say about the difference between using Warrior Plus and uh, your own affiliate program. Uh, the reason that people uh, re will, will readily promote using Warrior Plus or JVZoo is because they get the opportunity to be paid immediately when they make a sale. And affiliates are reluctant to promote if they're even going to get paid a day later. So even if you were to send out their commissions the next day, you'll get fewer affiliates if you uh, if you if you choose to use your own platform, 
right now. So, so, so there's, there's one issue with affiliate recruitment. Um, however, you can work around that, right? But typically, um, you would do that by kind of establishing a trust on one of the networks. So in other words, um, it's been my experience that you can actually ask someone uh, to use your system, to use your affiliate program, your personal affiliate program, if you've already established a track record um, of, of having a product and for them getting paid uh, by promoting for you. Right? It's just a harder way to get people uh, involved with your affiliate program if it's not on one of the known networks. So, 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 so you want to be, you, you be certain that you don't want to use the affiliate network first to get affiliates. Now, and so once you establish um, kind of a dialogue, an ongoing relationship with an affiliate, um, they've made money from your products, you can then go to them, I believe, and then say, hey, we're moving our affiliate program over to, let's say, this other platform or something like that. We're going to move it to your, your own personal platform. I think they would be a little more open to that if they've already promoted for you on one of the known networks. Right, so 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 that that's how I would answer that. Not to I think I think it is a I think it's a it's a good step. Um, it, it may not be the first step to go. All right. <clears throat> okay, but great question. Okay, so uh, uh, right here is where you're going to set the affiliate program for your customer. Right, so typically, uh, you know, depending on what you're going to be giving um, on the front end, um, you're going to write that in there. We talked about this a little bit, but when you write in some information here, you're going to tell um, your customer uh, sort of, uh, you know, a little bit about the product, what you're looking for, and, um, and whether or not you'd have them to promote. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Typically, uh, you are going to want to be eligible for deal of the day, so you're going to leave that. Uh, you're going to leave that open, and then you're going to click save, right, and get your product. So now, let's go to the offer section. I'm going to pull this over, and what we're going to do um, now that we have a product is we're going to attach that product to our offer, right? And we can do that by going to this page, clicking adding a product. And we're going to grab one of the products that we just set up. And in this particular case, we did this product. We're going to choose how much we want to pay the affiliates. And we're going to click Save. So now inside of Warrior Plus, this product is our front-end product. Right? This product is our front-end product. We would go through the same process in order to create an upsell. So in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to create a new page. We're going to uh, put in advanced or whatever we, we, we would call it, product launch. We're going to have our sales page set up. And I'm not going to go through that entire process right now because I want to just show you how to set up the upsell. Okay, so once you have these two products set up, you're going to get your second product set up. You're going to decide on what the commissions are going to be. You can click Save. What you're going to do now is that you are going to now set these up so that they are connected. So in other words, you're going to see that we still need to connect our upsell. And so we do that by going to this link, saving it. And so now, when the person actually comes to our page, they're going to get sent from this offer to the next offer. Right? This is another thing that the affiliate platforms actually do for you during this process. Okay, any questions? Any questions? 
Okay, so now that we have our offer set up, um, we have already set our launch date. We're going to click Activate Offer. Let's say it's going to be in the future. It's going to be at 9 in the morning. Okay, and so now our launch is set inside of Warrior Plus. So now really what the next step is going to be is we need to create our sales pages and then we need to start placing our buttons. And then in the final session what we need to do is we need to actually set up our product delivery. So in the, uh, in the next session what we're going to do is we're going to set up our sales pages and then in session four we're going to set up the, the, the uh, delivery and prepare for our launch. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, everyone, well, we're about at 40 minutes, I think, and uh, we're, going to, we're going to stop right here. Um, this is a good place to break. Um, next week, we will start with sales pages, and then, uh, as I said, the final week, we will deal with product delivery so that you will be ready to deliver your product. If you have any questions on anything, uh, any part of this process, uh, please let us know, and uh, we will be glad to answer your question. Okay, so everybody, thank you very much for being here, and we appreciate you. Have a great day and a pleasant tomorrow. Take care.